Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, you saw how you could generate a normals map using a matchbox shader. This influences the way the lighting reacts in the 3D scene when it is cast on a texture. This is one of many options that you can have when it comes to lighting. However, the lighting rig in Flame Premium 2016 has undergone some updates as a result of user feedback and new features such as Lightbox in the 3D scene. There is a lot to cover, so let's start off with some obvious and not so obvious enhancements to lighting. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the batch setup. Alternatively, if you're watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your web browser. Load the supplied batch setup and ensure that the batch composite has a duration of 72 frames. Double-click on the action node for its controls and switch to a dual view with ALT 2. If you scrub the time bar, you have a simple animation of 3D text flying in and out of frame. You'll use the 3D lighting to give the composite more depth. Pan the schematic if necessary to see the two 3D text geometries in the 3D scene. Ensure you're in the Action Bin menu and drag out a light into the Action Schematic. When you click and drag the light, it is shading every object in the 3D scene. Now I would like this light to only light the back wall and the floor. So switch the tools to Light Link through the drop-down menu or press L. To exclude the 3D text from the background lighting, hold ALT and drag a connection from the light to each of the 3D geometries. The 3D text goes black. In the Action Schematic, position the light under the two geometry nodes. This is purely for visual reference. Now let's go ahead and get a second light to relight the 3D text. Ensure you are in the Action Bin menu and drag another light into the 3D scene. Just position the light above the 3D text. Double-click the Light node for its controls. Firstly, one big change concerning shading is that lights can be deactivated in the 3D scene when it comes to rendering. So what's the point of having a light object that does not emit any light? Well, light objects now have multiple functions in action. You can emit light from a light object or you can emit image processing effects from a light object. These are called lightbox shaders. Or finally, light objects can simultaneously emit light and lightbox shaders. This is completely customizable. You'll work with lightbox shaders in later videos. For now, lights are active by default when you add them into the 3D scene from the Action node bin. Next, you have all the different light types in the drop-down menu and you can adjust the light spread. Set the spread down to 15 degrees. Now when it comes to aiming the light in previous versions of Flame Premium, you could only rotate the light to point it in the desired direction. In this version of Flame Premium, you can now switch to target mode that gives a movable target to help position the light. This targeting concept is also available for 3D cameras and projectors. Position the target over the Action 3D text. Now we'll come back to the target in a minute. But let's first soften the spotlight. Switch to the Profile menu. When it comes to softening and falloff, there are now two choices. You have the Custom Falloff mode, which is the same as before. You can completely customize the falloff of the light by adding points into the curve. However, this is a manual step and it is sometimes difficult to get the perfect falloff gradient. So the new default mode is parametric. This mode allows you to mathematically work out the correct falloff. By adjusting the falloff out and falloff in sliders, you can get a very natural even softness around the spotlight edge. The curve acts as a reference and is non-editable in this mode. Parametric falloff works with all light types that use the spread value to soften the edges of the light. 
You can also use the varying options of decay to make the light fade out as it travels further away from the light in the 3D scene. Now there are a few new menus under Lights that we'll look at in later videos. But switch back to the Basics menu. Coming back to the Lights target, you can click and drag it around. It can also be animated if required. But one other new function for Lights is Look At. Previously, you could only use Look At with access nodes. But this has been expanded to cameras, projectors and lights. For example, change the tools to Look At or press ALT-L. Drag a connection from the light to the axis of the action text. The target snaps to the centre of the object and the light shifts. When you scrub the time bar, the light will follow the 3D object. So this can be very handy in some instances. But this can be further expanded because the Look At function can also be animated. Turn on Auto Key. Now go to frame 24. In Select Mode, select the light. This ensures the keyframes will be displayed in the time bar. Switch to the Look At mode again. Even though the connection exists, drag a connection between the light and the axis. This time, a keyframe is added in the time bar at frame 24. Now scrub to frame 48. Drag a connection from the light to the axis of the lighting 3D text. The light target snaps to the other 3D object. Turn Auto Key off. When you scrub the time bar, you can see that the light starts on the first 3D object until frame 24. Between frame 24 and frame 48, the target automatically moves to the next 3D object. From frame 48 onwards, the target sticks to the second 3D object. You can redirect the Look At for the light as many times as you want. All you need to do is stop on a particular frame and draw the connection. You can even draw more connections back to the first object to make the light swing back again. Now when you park on a Look At keyframe, the designated connection for the current Look At target will highlight. So navigation between keyframes will give you a clear indication as to where the light is directed. There is also a Look At curve in the Animation Editor if you want to edit the Look At targets. As an extra tip, if you wanted to delete keyframes for Look At targets without going into the Animation Editor, there is another method. Ensure you are in Look At mode with ALT-L. Now go to the relevant keyframe and then you can drag a line across the highlighted connection to break it. The keyframe will be deleted out of the curve and the time bar. One other new feature is that you can now look directly through the light to see what the light's focus is. Ensure you are in SELECT mode and select the light in the action schematic. Hover over the result view and press F8 for the light object view. When you scrub the time bar, you can see where the light is directed throughout the composite. Now if you are using selective light links, then only objects connected with selective lighting are visible in the light's object view. This really helps when you want to focus the shading on something really specific and you want to see what the light is looking at. There will be more of this in later videos. Finally, the last workflow you will look at in this video is the ability to use masks to control the light distribution. For those with a stage lighting background, it's like putting a gobo or filter in front of the light to control the light distribution. For example, switch to the result view with F4. Let's say we wanted to limit a region where we see the spotlight for the 3D text. Switch to the Action Bin menu. Locate the GMask node and add it into the 3D scene. Now draw a shape around the region where you want to limit the spotlight. I also suggest switching to Add Points mode with A. Hold SHIFT and drag outwards from the mask to add softness. 
So right now, the mask is cutting through everything. Switch to the Gmask link with Alt-G. Drag a link from the Gmask node to the Light node. When you scrub the timebar, you will see how the light is limited to the shape of the Gmask. So in summary, all the improvements in lighting give you more control over your shading within the 3D scene. But all of this functionality is also extended out to the effect casting functionality of lights known as Lightbox. In the next video, we start looking at how to use Lightbox with lights in action. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.